Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, The Deconstructing Diaries. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to hear me talk. Um, appreciate you stopping by. In today's video, we're going to be talking about dating at IHOP because it is a very unique mindset there about dating. So I want to talk about that. Talk about that in the context of just like overall purity culture, kind of how just things there were perpetuated to that narrative um, and just things that I've had to unlearn about. Um, I guess a better way to say it is what I've had to unlearn as a result of just the effects of growing up in purity culture and how I relate to the world and how I relate to the opposite sex and kind of what I feel like God's taught me about healthy relationships. So um, if I seem a little tired um, and a little worn out, I've tried to film this video three different times and Either I have audio issues or certain files aren't saving. So I'm going to try to be like um, as energetic and concise as the first two videos. But I feel like like now I'm like, I'm just hearing myself talk a lot. So again, I'm going to try to be concise here. But um, yeah, before we dive into the video, I, def I definitely want to say thank you to everybody that watched my five part series on my IHOP story. Thank you so much. I had... I had no idea it was going to take off like that. There's been a lot of you um, that have left comments and I've interacted with you in the comments on my videos. Um, a lot of people have watched these videos. Again, I did not envision that at all. It's reaching a lot of people and it seems to really be resonating with a lot of folks. So I'm just glad that my story is helping people out there. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for leaving a comment if you did. Thank you so much for liking the video, sharing it. Any type of interaction you gave me on those videos, it's greatly appreciated. Um, it was truly just a step of faith, just stepping out and feeling like, you know, doing what I felt like, you know, I was told to do by the Lord. So anyway, I'm glad it's resonating with y'all. If you haven't watched that video and you're interested in just like my IHOP history, that's a good um, synopsis, or that's a good coverage of that. But here, before I get going into talking about dating at IHOP, um, just a brief background. I worked for the ministry. I was a student, and I was um, also an intern from 2004 to 2008. So I was there for four years. After that, I was no longer officially involved in any type of capacity, but I would consider myself like on the fringe of the community. For several years after that, meaning I had friends and family that were still on staff, um, me and my husband would still go to the prayer room, etc. So I would say really I've been 100% removed, um, and even that I can't really even say I'm 100% removed because I still know some people at IHOP and I still get updates from time to time. So I wouldn't consider myself part of the community anymore, I guess if that makes sense, and it's been like that for several years, but. I digress. Go watch that five-part series. Um, that'll give you a little bit more idea of my story and kind of where I'm coming from when I'm talking about dating at IHOP. So let's now dive into that whole thing because that's, ooh, that's a booger. Um, so dating at IHOP. Before I get into the, the meat and the bones of that, I just want to give a very brief overview of kind of um, my dating experience um, in high school leading into IHOP. So my dating experience in high school is I had boyfriends, um, but I grew up in purity culture. And if you know, you know, I, I, I could spend so much more time talking about purity culture, but I grew up in purity culture. So my version of dating was I, I did have boyfriends in high school, but I wasn't allowed to spend time with them um, on the weekends or like outside of school functions. So I could only see them at school because... My boyfriends, for the most part, I met at school, except for one. I met him through a friend, and he was the only one that I could see outside of school because he didn't go to the same school as me. He could come to my house, and we could hang out, but he couldn't take me on dates. That was the big thing. I was not allowed to go on dates. Um, and I think that was like a self-protection thing. Like, my parents wanted to keep me safe, you know, kind of see what I was doing, monitoring my stuff. If I'm at school, you know, I'm being monitored by adults. Uh, but I think part of it, too, is like purity culture. You know, you don't want to fall into any type of sexual sin. You don't want your teenager, you know, having sex. Um, so I think it was like it was both. So um, 
but yeah, I, I had boyfriends, so I definitely, um, dated, you know, I knew, you know, as a teenager, you're learning how to relate to the opposite sex. Um, but because of purity culture, you know, you, you kind of have a very heightened awareness of like how you want to conduct yourself. You know, you can only go so far physically, you can only go so far emotionally because you don't want to be, um, too emotionally involved with someone because you know, they're not your husband yet. And, you know, the whole idea of purity culture is you want to be able to give everything to your spouse. You know, women, you want to be able to give all of your body. You know, you want to be a virgin. You want to be pure. Um, you know, you want to give all of your emotions. So all of your heart, not just pieces of your heart, but everything, right? The idea is like you give everything to that person because they're committing to you and they deserve it. Um, so that was always definitely in the back of my mind. Um, and I adhered to it. You know, I wanted to be a good Christian girl. And so I adhered to the purity culture for the most part. Um, so, you know, I was definitely committed to being a virgin when I got married and just kind of really watching myself. So, um, like I talked about in my five part series, I was 18 years old when I joined IHOP. So I wasn't in any relationship. Um, I had broken up with my high school boyfriend that I had for off and on for three years in the height of purity culture. Um, with that, like I grew up in like the era of like, I kiss dating goodbye. Like the Josh Harris book was really popular when I was like a teenager. I never read that book, but I read a book similar to it. It was called like dating with intention or dating with a purpose or something along those lines. If I can find the book and remember the cover of it, I'll like, I'll somehow share a screenshot somewhere up here. But that was my experience. Um, and so I remember my mom giving me that book when I was like maybe 17, 18, just being like, read this, like, this is like a good dating book. And then she gave me another book about how, uh, codependency, like how to have like, not to be codependent basically. And it has a very Christianese type of lens. And so this book was no different about dating with intention. You know, you just don't date around, you know, you, you spend time with people that you think could really seriously be your spouse you know, write out a list of everything that you want your spouse to have. So when someone comes along, you can check them against the list and make sure like they have the same values as you. And so I did that. I wrote the list down. I, um, and, um, I think the other part of the book was you wrote the list down, you prayed on it, and then you didn't date. You waited basically for God to bring that person to you because you're praying about it. You know, you're seeking God, you know, it's kind of like, I call it this, I don't know if it's an actual thing, and but it's kind of like the magic genie, you know, idea of God, of like, God is my magic genie, he gives me whatever I want, and that was kind of that when it came to dating, like, write out your list, God will, God will figure it out, he'll bring you your mate, you know, you just sit and wait, you don't do anything, you know, you just wait it out, you know, God's got the best for you, you sit there and wait, that's what I did, you know, um, and there's a whole other, like, ripple effect of, that whole idea of waiting, you know, because it really does paralyze people into not living life. But that's a whole other video that I could talk about. But I was in the I was in the waiting period, you know, I was like, okay, I'm not going to date, you know, I'm just gonna wait for God to bring somebody to me, you know, he'll he'll figure it out. So as a young 18 year old going into IHOP naively, um, you know, I didn't know really anything about IHOP. And I think I talked about that in my videos, you know, I knew that they had great music and I knew like it was 24 seven prayer, but I knew nothing else about the culture. I knew nothing. Like I was going in blind on a lot of things. And one of the things I was semi going blind in on is dating there at IHOP. So one of the things that, um, is true about if you do an internship, at IHOP. So if you do any of the um, young adult tracks, and what I mean by that is they have different internships for different groups of folks. So they have four internships all together. They have two for young adults and then one that's more geared to like families or people that are married. And then they have like a retired group um, internship. They called it the Simeon Company. Um, so I was in one of the young adult tracks. I was in the one thing track for 18 to 25 year olds. And I remember, um, getting to IHOP and how the internship worked is your internship started on a certain date, but similar to college in that move my mic closer. It was similar to set up to college in that like you had move in days cause we all lived in dorms. And so, um, 
you had like a day where you moved in and then there was another day where you had orientation for your internship. So it was like they they gave you all the rules. They kind of gave you a lowdown about IHOP. This was also a good time for your parents or any family or anybody that you wanted to come with you as you moved in to kind of check out IHOP. So there was like down times where um, while you're getting, you as the intern are getting moved in, um, and meeting certain key people, then your parents or whoever came with you to help you move in, they had some downtime where they could go to the, I, you know, the prayer room, they could go to church, um, you know, they could, you know, check out the coffee shop, check out the bookstore, so they can kind of check out the environment. But I remember in the orientation the next day, I was with my parents, and um, my leader, um, who I don't, I don't think I mentioned this, but my internship leader was David Slyker, which if you know anything about IHOP leadership, he was the president of IHOP U at one point. He recently stepped down like in December um, because of all the allegations that came out about Mike Bickle. But he was my intern leader. So he was ahead of my internship in January of 2004, David Slyker. And I remember him, I can't remember where we were in IHOP. I think it was the multi-purpose room, which is like this kind of, large gathering room and so it's all of us little interns in our families and then the intern leaders with Dave um there was probably eight to ten other like leaders that served under Dave that were like co-leaders so they had um another guy named Billy Humphrey who is the leader of the IHOP um in Atlanta he was like Dave's right hand guy and then the, like I said there was probably like eight other like leaders under them that you know actually lived with you in the dorms and they were more like your age like young adult that were kind of like your intern leaders just kind of laying some context here so in this orientation they talk about again they're laying out the rules and one of the rules is no dating during your internship so for the six months I was there I was not allowed to be in any type of romantic relationship with somebody. That was a no-no. It was also told to us, and I think it was even in the paperwork now that I remember or recall, when you're filling out the application, they talk about that you that you need to be single. This is for single people only. So you cannot be married, you cannot be engaged, you can't even be in, in a relationship. So without saying it, if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, the understanding was you you broke up with them to go do this internship, which hindsight looking back is like being with being in a serious relationship or being in a romantic relationship with somebody and then coming to do an internship at the house of prayer so you can get to know more about Jesus and learn more about Jesus. They're not mutually exclusive, meaning like you can do both at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not one's not going to conflict the other, but in their mind, it was a confliction. They thought dating relationships are a distraction. You're here to consecrate yourself for the Lord. You're here to fall in love with Jesus. You're here to learn about the end time prayer movement. You're here to learn about um, your calling, how to fulfill your calling in the context of the um, end time prayer movement. You know, your schedule is going to be very rigorous. So, you, you know, you don't even have time to call and maintain a relationship. So they made it very clear, like, hey, I know you're going to find people attractive here, and that's what happens because we're all humans and you're young adults, but really, you are not allowed to date. Um, I can't remember if they used the language of you'll get kicked out of your internship if they found out you were dating somebody, but the implication was if they found out you were involved with somebody, you would get in serious trouble. So I remember that being a thing. And I remember just kind of thinking like, it was kind of funny because the way Dave Slyker presented it, like he presented it very jokingly. And so we were all like laughing in the orientation. But, you know, I did kind of have an afterthought of like, hmm, like that's really interesting that they don't allow us to date. You know, I, I can't, I can't date somebody for the six months. But at the same time, you're young, you know, you just want to follow along. You know, you at least me, I'm, I'm a big rule follower. I don't want to like rock the boat. So for me, I was like, I don't care. Like I'll, I'll follow the rules. But I did kind of think in the back of my mind, like mm, that kind of sucks. If I really like somebody, like we can't do anything about it. I don't recall at the time my parents taking any great concern with it. Um, you know, I think they were happy that I wasn't allowed to date <laughs> during this six month period. So they're probably like, cool. 
that's great. Less distractions for us. Like, bang for our buck. You know, she's not going to, you know, not say she doesn't want to finish the program or whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, I just remember that because that was definitely, like, a very clear standard starting off. It definitely created some awkwardness at times where you could tell people were starting to develop feelings for each other, but they couldn't do anything about it. So then you're trying to like find ways to spend time with each other in the context of being just friends, (laughs) but really like you're quasi dating, right? Like you would just go out with a group of people, but really you knew like these only these two people really just wanted to hang out with each other. So, I mean, people found their ways of getting to know one another without calling it dating, but yeah, it just, it, it created this like weird, like social thing where it's like, well, I really want to get to know them, but I can't date them. So, um, it, it was just, it created a very interesting environment. So then I transitioned out of the internship, like I talked about, went home, but came back. And so outside of internships, IHOP at the time did not have a stance on dating. Now, a little bit later on, I will talk about that they did kind of make a public stance that I I have some thoughts on, but we'll get there. So as I'm kind of navigating my life at IHOP, again, there was no real clear like rules on dating because again, I mean, even though it's a young adult movement, everyone for the most part is over 18. So they're legal adults. You can't really dictate how people are going to date. And also too, you're trying to defend that you're not a cult, so you definitely don't want to put <laughs> the parameters around that because then it definitely comes off like you're a cult so it kind of leaves this weird thing where it's like if you did an internship then you have to kind of get out of the mindset of okay I can date now and so how do I move forward with dating because the other thought or the other thing that's kind of lingering in the background here is that a lot of people, you know, for the most part are there for the end time prayer movement. So how, how do I click into that? Like what's my spot in ushering Jesus back plus the bridal paradigm of, you know, Jesus is your bridegroom. You should be in love with Jesus and it kind of romanticizes your relationship with God. And so because of that, you know, people I think felt uncomfortable with the idea of dating sometimes because they felt like all of their focus, all of their love, all of their attention should be on Jesus and that any type of human romantic relationship would put Jesus like in second place and like Jesus would take a back seat. And so I think some people struggled with feeling attraction for people, but just didn't really know how to go about that in the context of this end time prayer movement where we're all there just to really pray and seek the Lord. Um, And so I think people, like I said, they really struggled with that. But if you were interested in dating somebody, IHOP is not a culture where you could just walk up to somebody and say, introduce yourself and then just say, hey, I've seen you around the prayer room. Can I take you out sometime? That does not happen there (laughs) at all. Because, and this talks to a deeper culture at IHOP, but IHOP is very insular, meaning that even though there's people that come from all over the world to IHOP, it's insular because by nature it's transient, meaning that people are coming and doing internships and leaving. People are coming and doing the four-year school and then they're leaving. So there's a lot of turnover. And so I think there is like a self-protection of you don't want to get close to somebody just for them to leave, right? And then you have to somehow pursue like a long distance relationship. So a lot of times um, you develop dating relationships out of friendships that you have with people there. Whether you knew them in an internship or you are going to school with them at IHOPU or you just you met through mutual friends. So a lot of or you're on worship teams. That's how a lot of people met and got together, too, is, you know, you're on worship teams Um, So you're playing music together. Um, So, but there's always some type of base. Like it was never, like I mentioned, hey, I'm so-and-so. I, I, I see you around. Can I take you out to coffee or can I meet with you for lunch for some time? And you've never had a conversation like that just does not happen like that. So how kind of dating works at IHOP is you start off as friends and really, The friendship phase is also 
in my opinion, almost like kind of like the quasi like first initial dating phase as well, because you're friends, but in some contexts, you're also asking questions that you would ask when you're first dating somebody like, hey, like, do you want to get married? How many kids do you want to have? You know, how do where do you envision seeing your life? Right. Um, and so you're kind of asking those questions when really you would ask someone those questions like when you're first dating, right? So it's kind of like this friendship talking phase. You're spending a lot of time in groups. You're not really spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time because like I said, even though there was nothing official, like from IHOP saying like, you know, this is how we want you to date or this is how we think you should date. In addition to that, there was really no purity culture messaging, meaning like there was nothing to talk about like, um, expectations from like a purity culture standpoint so but per, but purity culture was strong there so women dress very modestly you know that type of stuff um and I think it was more perpetuated in that this is an end time prayer movement so we're here to usher in Jesus and it's your job to figure out you know what that is whether you're praying playing an instrument you know what your role is in that and so like don't get sidetracked, right? And so that's kind of the whole context there as well. So like I said, even though there's no like official purity culture talks there, it was still the expectation like you want to start getting to know people in groups. You don't want to spend time alone because you don't want to fall into sexual immorality or sexual sin. Um, and that was always very mindful. Now, again, this is a young, a young adult movement. Everyone's for the most part 18 to 30 years old. I'm not going to sit here and say that people didn't fall into sexual immorality or sexual sin because there's hundreds, if not thousands of people there that come from all different walks of life, different struggles. And so I can recall a couple of times that I would hear things about people that I was going to school with or people that I just knew um, that had fallen into certain things like that. So I'm not going to say that it didn't happen, but it was always very mindful of like, hey, just be careful, like what type of situation you put yourself in, you know, when you are dating, you want to stay pure, that kind of same purity culture type of thing. So again, like I mentioned, the first phase of dating at IHOP is your friends and your friends for honestly longer than the dating process to be. And it's perfectly true. Some people, your friends for like, you know, six months to a year. Some people are friends for several years before they get married or they go to the next step of dating. So your friends for a very long time or a, a significant amount of time, then you're kind of like in that getting to know you phase where then you're like, Hey, I really like this person. I want to move forward to dating them, like being in a romantic relationship with them. And I hop culture takes that part very seriously. Um, they see that as like once you start entering a dating relationship with somebody, you need to have the utmost purest intentions. Don't waste anybody's time. Like at this point when you're dating, you should be pretty convinced like this person is going to be it. So it's a very different mindset, right? Because typical dating is, hey, I just want to get to know you. And you don't really know if this person's it. IHOP is like, hey, if you start dating, then you should kind of already have a pretty good sense of like this person's going to be your person. So it puts dating in a much higher threshold. It puts a lot more pressure on dating. And so the next step is then you, you start dating um, and you date very quickly. It's a matter of like probably three to six months tops and then you immediately get married. My situation was unique in that I dated for six months and then we were planning our wedding um, for like another eight months. So we, it was a little over a year before me and my husband got married. So we were a couple and by IHOP standards, that is very, very long. Most people it's, you're dating and you get married within like three to five months, which is very, very quick. Um, I do not recommend that. There's a lot of safety concerns around that there's a lot of emotional spiritual financial concerns it just overall in general you do not give yourself enough time and if you don't know that person thoroughly 
then you could be setting yourself up for some pretty serious life altering consequences. I'll just say that. But in IHOP world, it's like you just think everyone has the purest of of intentions. You know, you know them from the prayer movement. You think they are perfect. And it's also the understanding that um, because you don't want to fall into sexual sin, you know, people are moving quickly so they can have marital relations, if you know what I mean. And so even though that wasn't like officially like touted, people aren't dumb they're not stupid like they kind of know like I I know why they're getting married like they they can't wait and I get that the Bible talks about like it's better to be married than to burn but the Bible also talks about self-control and so I just don't think it's responsible in my opinion to rush into something that you might not be ready to do um it, like marriage because you have a very strong sexual attraction for somebody like I feel like there should probably be a little bit more self-control a little bit more boundaries in place to where you don't fall into those things like I, I felt like people rushed into marriage because they were ready to have marital relations but they were just not financially ready um and that creates ripple effects down the road you know where you just you need to be at a certain financial stability to be able to support yourself a family um But I think the main thing, like I talked about, was that people are just ready to get it on. So that was a big thing. And then, you know, the next trajectory is after you got married is then most likely you get pregnant within the first year because there was a group of people at IHOP, not everybody, but there was a certain group of people at IHOP that didn't believe in birth control. So again, you have this culture of people moving very quickly in these dating relationships, getting married, having kids, and then just um, staying in the prayer movement, right? Getting more plugged in. Now, as I mentioned, um, there was no like public policy or yeah, there was no policy. Like if you're on staff or, you know, if you weren't in an internship, cause again, they had very strict rules, but if you were outside of an internship, so if you were a student staff, whatever, there was no dating rules, but you're probably thinking, okay, I mean, aside from being an intern where they tell you you can't date, where would anybody get the idea to move so quickly in these relationships? Because again, that's not normal, right? In the outside world, you wouldn't think getting married to somebody um, from dating them for six months, or not even six months, excuse me, dating them for three months, you know, is healthy or reasonable or even sensible, right? So where would we even get this idea? My memory's fuzzy, but I can remember or I can recall at least one or two times where Mike Bickle from the pulpit talked about his dating relationship with his wife. And one of the things that he talked about was on his very first date with his spouse, Diane, he told her that God had spoken to him, Mike, that Diane was going to be his wife. And he told her that on their very first date. And subsequently, I mean, they got married, they have kids. I also believe that I don't, I think that resulted in them having a quick dating experience. I don't know if it was like three months, but it, I remember it being like quick. Like it wasn't like a traditional, like you're, you're with each other for years and then you have like another year being engaged. It wasn't, that wasn't their story. I think they kind of moved quickly too, because God told him so hey why waste time right so even though Mike shared that and he didn't you know publicly say okay this is my stance this is how I want everybody to date well this is what I think is good for everybody it just kind of you have to understand it kind of goes like as an unspoken now because now Mike has shared his story people are saying that he's married um and he seems like he's he's got it all together. And so it just kind of sends this unspoken message of like, well, if it's good enough for Mike, then it's good enough for me. And so it just perpetuates that. And then it's just like this ripple effect because then you see other people getting married in three months and then they seem happy. You know, you don't see what's going on behind the scenes. They could be in a completely terrible relationship. They could even potentially be in an abusive relationship, but you don't know that. Like you, you know, people put on facades, right? And so, It just perpetuates the problem. I knew I wanted something different. I knew the dating culture at IHOP was weird AF. I wouldn't have said that at the time, but 
that's my language now. It is weird AF. I mean, who does that? Who who gets married within three months of dating somebody? I don't even care if you are friends for many, many years. There's a there's different layers to people. Humans are multifaceted. And so there's just different layers of people from when you see them as a friend to when you're dating them. And one of the things that, you know, I say, and me and my brother talk about when it comes to dating, but it's like, get to know people in every season of life. And it's two faceted, meaning like time, you need to spend significant amount of time with them in a dating context, not just a friend context, but in a dating context to really see what they're about because dating and being friends is two different things and then two dating really ultimately shows somebody's character so but if you're not spending that purposeful quality time with someone then you're not getting enough time to show and see their true character and my concern is that people are rushing into these relationships and they're not seeing people's character. And then you're married, so now you are legally binded to this person. And if they turn out to be this horrible garbage can of a person, it's just a lot more work legally, emotionally, and even physically to separate yourself from them. I'm not saying anybody, well, I won't say that. So, yeah, so that was. I always thought that was concerning. I never really liked the idea of people moving quickly at IHOP. I knew I wanted my story to be different. I thought my story was great. I got to know my husband for six months, dated him, you know, we dated. Then, you know, another eight months of planning our wedding and spending a lot of time together. Um, I remember people at IHOP telling me, be like, please, please don't be like everybody around here. I remember I had um, one of my instructors, um, at at FMA being like please like I'm so glad you're in a relationship but like please take your time like do not rush into it like I just cannot tell you how many girls I talk to that are dating guys here and they just rush into things and it's just like she's like I just get heavily concerned about that and rightfully so she should be concerned and I just said hey you don't got to worry about me like I I hear you loud and clear I don't want that either Um, I want to take my time And so when she heard that, you know, we were getting married after like six months, she was like, good, good for you. (laughs) Like, good girl, you know, like you, you took my advice. And for some people, they would be like six months, man, that that's quick. But I mean, me and my husband were friends. We were friends for probably like six months before we dated. So we knew each other for then a total of two years at that point, Um, because we met in 2006 and then we got married in 2008. So we knew each other for two years. Which, by IHOP standard, is a long time. Because by then, you know, you could be married and have several kids in two years, you know, depending on what's going on. So, it's just a very interesting situation in that, like I said, you know, dating in the Christian world is very different than dating in the IHOP world. And I just, looking back on it, I, I didn't have a lot of language to it. I just knew it was weird, but... It, the, the language now is that it's unhealthy. There are certain aspects of it that I can't, I can't ascribe to. Like, yes, be friends with somebody. Research shows that couples that have been friends before they get married actually have a, a better chance of um, being in a happier relationships and your relationships last longer. Um, but I don't like the idea of then rushing into relationships because you want to be just physical like you should get married to somebody for more than just their body and your sexual needs like I mentioned um Mike Bickle you know talking about his dating experience but with his wife but there was no other public information or like stories talked about uh, dating um I think it was just kind of like you were left to your own devices and I think for some aspect that is true like part of growing up is just figuring out how you relate to people and how you're relationally you know developing those relationships but it's more different at I, it's more different and difficult at IHOP because um sorry that's my son um because of just the hyper religiosity of it all and like I talked about people kind of struggled with well if I date like am I sinning against Jesus kind of concept and so I remember I remember very distinctly, I was in a class with IHOPU and Alan was teaching the class and somehow it came up about dating and he just, he said something that was so refreshing to me that I thought, oh my gosh, 
someone that's actually giving good advice about how to relate to people on a normal human level that's like solid advice but he basically said hey it's not a sin to find somebody attractive you know if you happen to see a girl in the prayer room that you see often and you think she's pretty like that's not that's not lustful that's not wrong that's not a sin like god created attraction which i 100 percent agree with this is sam talking like i agree with that god created attraction um he also created sexual desire but i digress um, <laughs> but then Alan said, you know, and it's not a sin for you to want to get to know her and, you know, figure out who she is. He's like, it's also not a sin if you want to take her out for like a cup of coffee or take her out for like a, a date or a lunch. Like all those things are not sinful. And you're probably like, why would even somebody say that? Well, in the context of IHOP, again, like I said, people are struggling with even like is my attraction even a sin? Like, because I'm here supposed to be focusing on Jesus. But then too, like people didn't know how to relate to each other if you didn't know them. So it's like, is it okay if I walk up to somebody and say hello? Like, is it okay if I ask them for a cup of coffee? Cause I don't want to come off weird. And so I think he was just trying to normalize and take the pressure off of people and say, look, your mind's going to be so occupied with the what ifs and all of this versus like, I think he remember, I think he even said, like, just get it over with. Like, if you're obsessing about it and you're just trying to figure out, like, should I say something? Then just walk up to her and say it, right? Um, and I just remember being like, yes, like, please do that. Because purity culture and even more perpetuated at IHOP is, like, when the men are the pursuers. Women are not supposed to be pursuing men. So there's a lot of girls just sitting around IHOP waiting for a guy to ask them out. And there's a lot of amazing people there. And so you're just kind of sitting there waiting around, kind of like what I was doing, you know, since 18, like waiting for someone to ask me out. It was kind of the code word, like if someone asked you out for a cup of coffee, that was like, oh, he's asking me on a date, um, which is so funny now, like <laughs> just being so outside of the, the culture. It's like, you know, some people even saw it as like if a guy asked you to go get a cup of coffee, then it was like him asking you to be his you know, to be his girlfriend. And it's just, it's so silly now to think back on that because I don't even think like that anymore of like, if I had a male colleague or a male friend say, Hey, let's go grab some coffee sometime. I wouldn't think he's interested in me in a romantic way. But in that IHOP culture at the time, if you ask somebody out for like a cup of coffee or something like that, then it was like, Oh, they're serious about me. Like they want it. They want to, you know, spend $5 on a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? Like it was just totally, it's just a different mindset. So I just remember Alan trying to add some human, you know, humanness, some humanity to like, hey, this is how you date. And he has three sons. And at the time they were like young adults, you know, teenager age. So I think he was probably even trying to help them navigate like how you date at IHOP. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things of like, I think he was just trying to help fill in the gap. Because, again, you have hundreds of thousands of people that are in this young adult group that are just trying to figure out dating in the context of doing it right Jesus honoring purity honoring how do I do that and there just was like zero resources to teach people how to do that so aside from Alan saying that in a class it wasn't to the broader IHOP community like in that particular class of a couple hundred kids there was no public stance when I was there the next part I'm going to tell you put a little caveat on it because it was told to me um, through a staff member at IHOP, they were in this meeting when this was told and then they told it to me. So I didn't hear it from my own ears, but I do trust this person, like I said, and they're on staff at IHOP. But many years after I left IHOP, probably maybe three to five years after I left the community, but I still consider myself like on the fringes because I, I know people on staff and people would kind of keep me like um, looped in on what was going on. Um, and I remember talking to this person and it was just like a casual conversation. I was like, Hey, what's new at IHOP? And they're like, well, they're like, we were in the staff meeting. Um, and before I get going, I want to give a caveat to, or I want to give some context to this staff meeting. So IHOP, if you're on staff and if you're a student, then they have these, I think they're monthly or bi-monthly staff meetings where basically they get everybody together and just say, hey, like, this is what God's sharing with us as far as, like, how we need to move forward with the community um, and, like, just some other, like, updates. So just think of it as, like, this mass meeting. 
in the staff meeting though, in this particular one that this person's telling me about, it's a panel of key IHOP leaders. So like Mike Bickle's up there with his wife, Alan Hood's up there with his wife and a couple other leaders. I can't remember the other leaders, but there it's like a panel. And I can't remember specifically if it was about the whole panel was about dating or if someone asked a question about dating. Somehow dating came up in at IHOP. And so collectively what the panel was saying, what they said publicly to staff publicly. So this is like a broader statement, not just what I experienced in a classroom. This is like they're telling all of their staff members this. So this is significant. What they told the staff there at the time was, hey, you know, um, yeah, we believe that there's godly dating. You know, we we believe that God supports marriages. You know, um, we think, you know, it's great. Um, we know a lot of people have met their spouse here and they're, they're in happy relationships. We're just so happy about that. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, we, um, want to promote people being God honoring. We want to promote people being honest and sincere. And so we definitely don't want you wasting time with anybody on dating. So if you're just asking people out cause you just want to date around and you just kind of want to um, have fun, kind of be a player, you know, kind of a thing. Like we want to discourage that. Like we really want you to go on dates with the intention of really getting to know somebody and really believing like this person, like we want you to be serious about people. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I could, that's fair. I mean, I think most people, whether you're Christian or not type of organization would say like, Hey, like don't play with people's emotions. Don't play around, you know? That they definitely were, I think what they're trying to say is like, there's no casual dating around here. You date with intention, which is again, purity culture. Um, but then they took it one step further in that they're like, yep, we don't, we don't want anybody, you know, wasting time, anything like that. So by the third date, you should have a pretty clear understanding if this person is your spouse or not. If you don't know if they're it, then you need to break up with them and move on so you don't waste anybody's time. I was like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> what do you mean the third date? Because in my mind, I'm thinking that's ridiculous. That is crazy talk to tell your staff and your students that you should have it figured out. You should know this person is your life mate by the third date. Didn't mean to make that rhyme, but your your person, the person that you're supposed to be married to, you're supposed to get that figured out by the third date. And if not, you need to end things. And I'm going to say it now because I'm not part of the community so I can be bold here, but that is grossly irresponsible. I feel like that is terrible advice. You are potentially setting people up for failure because now you are even more perpetuating the quickness of relationships. Now, I don't think they were promoting go get married tomorrow once you figured out, hey, this person is your person. But it certainly doesn't discourage you. You know, it doesn't discourage people from moving quickly in relationships. I think the more responsible thing as a leadership panel and group is to say, date with intention yes get to know people but you don't put pressure on it just say hey you know really give yourself time give yourself six months to a year to figure it out assess your situation as it goes if you figure out you know as you're getting to know someone that hey you're just on two different um two different places then just end it you know hey look it looks like we want two different things i don't feel continue i don't feel comfortable continuing on but to tell people that you should know if they are your partner, your life mate, by your third outing, your third date, again, it's just so irresponsible. And so I have a lot, I have a lot of concern with that. Now, if they've changed their stance then since then, which I pray to God they have, probably haven't, then I I have a lot of concern for that. I have a lot of concern for the people that are in the IHOP world that are trying to navigate dating. I have a lot of concern for young adults that are entering into this world that want to get on staff and, and want to be students. 
because that is the perpetuated culture. That is the standard they have now set and said, you need to figure it out by the third date. I think it's grossly irresponsible, like I said, because you're rushing a process that doesn't need to be rushed. You're putting a lot of pressure on people that on a process that is already stressful enough and you shouldn't um, put a lot of pressure there. I know at one at one point in time too, when you know when Mike would share about his whole like God God told me that you're gonna be my wife thing, like I'm just thinking of this now, so that's why it's not as uniform. But I just remember like even talking to like a guy and being like, Well, I want God to do that for me. Like I want him to tell me like who my wife is and like until I get that, like I like I don't wanna play games, right? And so I just don't think the God speaking to you and saying you, you're my wife, it may happen, but I think it's also emotionally manipulative and even probably borderline spiritually manipulative to tell somebody that on a first date. I think you still, even if God says, hey, FYI, she's it, I don't think that negates you still going through the dating process and getting to know them as a person just because God said yes they're your person and you feel like that's an impression on your heart, God still wants you to do the right thing and get to know them and and go through the dating process. That just doesn't mean like God me God told me to tell you to marry you and then you go to the courthouse tomorrow and get married. Like that doesn't set up for a good, healthy, sexual, romantic relationship with your partner down the road. Because you didn't build the foundations of your house, right? You know, you didn't build those romantic blocks of the, the I love yous and all of that. Like, it's just like a straight beeline. Like, it's almost like the car auction. I just had that analogy. Like, oh, that one over there. I want that one. You know, let me go take it home. Like, it just does not set you, it does not set you up for success down the road when trying to establish these relationships. So it's just a very interesting world at IHOP. Like, I had never, ever heard of anybody in my whole entire growing up in the Christian circles ever people saying like, hey, I'm waiting for God to tell me who my wife is so then I can just pursue her like, or, you know, people moving very quickly in the three month process. It was always, um, it was always shown to me that people dated, you know, you, you went out there and you you met in similar circles. A lot of people just met in church and then you dated, um, and, you know, you, you were pure, you know, you, you did it the right way. Um, but there was no rush to like get people married off quickly. Like that was a whole new experience to me. And I just thought that was so, so interesting. So kind of segueing, segueing now, it's getting late. Um, I haven't eaten yet and my brain's getting fried. So I'm going to try to wrap this up because I think I've been recording for almost an hour now, but just kind of transitioning now into what I've had to unlearn from purity culture and then from like IHOP. Um, Those two things together really fried my brain in terms of how I relate to people. Um, One of the biggest things I had to learn was how to relate to the opposite sex out of the context of them. Me thinking they just want to talk to me because I'm pretty or they want to go on a date with me. And even though I was married and I started moving into working in the corporate world. I can't remember if I mentioned this because again, I I can't remember if I mentioned this, but I'll be clear here. Um, I work in HR. So I, inter- I interact with everybody from all walks of life. And one of the things that I had to really figure out and deconstruct from was how to relate to men because the corporate world is male dominated. Everybody knows that. And so how do I navigate interacting professionally with somebody that is either like my superior or my direct boss or somebody that I have to like manage in some way, shape or form. Like how does that all work when the context of me seeing men and what was taught to me was that they see you as a sexual object most likely and um, they won't take you like really seriously, right? And that's not just perpetuated in the Christian world that's like perpetuated and like culture as well. So I had to really unlearn that and, and try to figure out, okay, how do I navigate these waters when I'm married and like realize that like men don't just, men don't see me always as a sexual object. Like men actually 
value my opinion. They value what I bring to the table. They think I'm smart. They think I'm funny. Like they see me beyond one dimension of who I am, which is asexual being. Right. And I had to learn to see men beyond that of just like, oh gosh, like all they think about is sex. Right. And so one of the main things that I've, I've asked the Lord to teach me is like, show me how you see these people. Like when you look at this person, how do you see them? And that has helped me tremendously because I struggled a lot because there was narratives that were taught to me that were just completely toxic, to be honest. Like, you know, there's narratives of like, you know, you really shouldn't be alone with another guy that's not your husband, you know, after I got married. And so now you're like, well, I, I have a male boss. So like, I'm going to have to be in meetings with him. So now you're like really awkward because you're like, oh gosh, should I be doing this? Am I doing the wrong thing? Um, you know, or even like, Hey, you really shouldn't have male friends after you get married. Like your husband should be the only guy. Right. So then now you're interacting with a lot of men at work. So then it's like, how do I navigate these waters? And so just having to really unlearn all of that. And I think I learned more about healthy relationships, healthy boundaries with the opposite sex in the corporate world than I did in church. And I know that's like a crazy statement to say, but it's 100% true. I learned more about how to have a normal interaction with men of the opposite sex that were not my husband. And I learned how to have healthy friendships with men and not, and realize that that's not a sin in the context of a corporate worldly environment versus the church, because the church is so black and white in that you can't have any interaction with a man that's not your husband. You shouldn't be touching on another man that's not your husband, which yes, like sexually you shouldn't be touching other people, but like even like, Hey, you shouldn't be given, you know, guys hugs and stuff. And so it's just, there was a lot of mind F's <laughs> that I had to unlearn being in the corporate world. So if anybody is watching this video that I worked with probably in the first 10 years of my career, I am so sorry. <laughs> Cause I was probably really awkward and weird around you and it wasn't you. I was just trying to unlearn and deconstruct some things. So don't take it personal. I probably had a great working relationship with you. It was just, it was just weird. I had a lot of, I had a lot of things I had to unlearn up here. Um, and God gave me grace for that. And God led me through those waters. 100% believe God led me through those waters because it created such paralyzing fear in me that I didn't want to do the wrong thing in terms of honoring my marriage, honoring my husband, honoring, you know, people that I respected in my religious community. And so just having to learn that, yes, I can still honor the Lord and have healthy relationships with men. And my husband can honor the Lord and honor me and have friendships with women you know, it's, it's a two way street. Right. And so just learning all of those, all of those things was really, really impactful to me. It was very freeing for me, um, where I just, I could see people in their humanity, right. I could see people in their, all their dimensions that they are beyond just the sexual side of it. Right. Which church likes to overly sexualize people. And I don't understand why. Um, because Jesus didn't do that. Jesus sat in people's humanity. Jesus loved people. And that's what we're called to do, right? I mean, it talks about in Romans how we are supposed to be, um, you know, we're supposed to live in harmony with others. You know, we're supposed to live uh, with people in their humanity, live in peace. And if we can't have healthy relationships, then how are we going to do that? Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up. My son has come to visit me like twice, complaining that he's hungry. So I probably should go feed him. I should be God honoring and feed my child. Um, so again, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for listening to my thoughts and just another aspect of me. Um, just learning about God and learning about healthy relationships. And there's so much more that I could share in this video, but I've, I've already been talking for way too long. It's been over an hour now. So I want to try to keep this video somewhat concise. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll probably just post more about that as I kind of think more about it. And there's so much deeper conversations about purity culture. Um, but in the context of this video, I definitely wanted to just kind of share dating at IHOP because, again, it's a very different world 
even outside of just the Christian world. And so I just felt like that was important to share just to kind of, again, give a glimpse of what the culture is like there. If you wanted to learn more about the culture, or even if you are considering joining the community there, or if you have um, a young adult that in your life that's considering joining, um, hopefully this video is, is helpful to you. So Again, thank you so much for watching, and um, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. See you guys in the next video. Bye.